Houdini 20 gives us some new nodes for creating clouds. And I wanted to show how we can use these to create gobos for terrains. So this project file will be available on Patreon. I'll include this terrain as part of that. It's just a terrain from um, my lost facility project that I have not yet finished, uh, but I will hopefully finish that at some point here. Got distracted with Houdini 20. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. This will be available on Patreon. I'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect this for now. And let's go back and turn this back to the Houdini GL viewport. We're just in Solaris here. All I've done is add a landscape with a, just a default gray material on it, and then a light with some render settings. There's nothing too complex going on here. Nothing that you can't set up in just a minute. The landscape is just a height field file bringing in that that high field you can also just create your own inside of houdini but just got one set up here just to demonstrate this so let's go ahead and drop down a sop create and let's wire this in let's go ahead and just call this clouds for our simplicity and let's dive inside here so in here we have some new nodes for clouds so if we start typing sky we can get a few different things so if we want to create 3d skyboxes you'd use the skybox but i'm going to go ahead and just create some 2d gobo type stuff for our terrains so let's go ahead and drop down the sky field and that creates basically just a height field terrain that we got going on here and uh, the settings in here i'm just going to leave at default just for now and then we can start typing in sky again and we can start to use some of these other nodes so if we use uh, sky field from map we can bring in our own like picture map to to use as our sky field we can also use patterns but i'm just going to drop down this noise and i'm going to show you a, a couple of different ways that we can go about creating these type of gobos so let's go ahead and just set that display flag there and if you want to like if you have your terrain so let's just create a height field with some noise so if we want to see where our terrain is at with this, we can come to this template flag. See that doesn't actually do anything by default, but if we hold control and click that template flag, we can see that our actual sky field starts to show up. And if I come up into our sky field here and we set this vertical offset, we'll just leave it at 200 there and then you'll see that it starts to pop up above our terrain. So if you want to see your terrain below your your sky field or see where it's at and they're in the same node network you can just hold control and select that template flag and that will allow you to do so let's go ahead and just delete that for now though and let's start to set up some of these settings so in this sky field noise uh there's you can play around with the different settings here obviously we have some different things in here these are more of the stuff that's been in houdini but we have the simplex cloud and this fast simplex cloud which are new to houdini 20. Play around with the element size let's maybe you know, let's do something like this let's just offset this and then let's play around with the worldly details oops so we'll just check those and that starts to add quite a bit of detail you see to our clouds so you can mess with the erosion that's going to affect how much of uh, the cloud cover there kind of is you can also play with the blend to see Kind of blend between the before and after with and without the worldly details and you can change the element size of your details as well so maybe let's set this to yeah, something like that should be good and we'll just leave this as is for now and let's go ahead and jump back out into our uh our stage level here and if i go ahead and just set this to karma xpu I have not set any materials here, but you can see that this by default actually kind of works. So you don't have a ton of control over the uh, darkness of your shadows and stuff without just cranking up the exposure on the light. So if I bring that up, you can see that we start to bring up some of those shadows, uh, but you don't have a ton of control this way. I haven't found a good way of, of getting control over this. And if I go ahead and just come into like this material linker, I have this cloud material. If you just come to the, the catalog in the default Houdini 20 catalog, there's a cloud material. We drag this in and then drag our clouds over. It doesn't really work very well. And if I were to do the same thing with like this 
landscape material if we just add our clouds to that it kind of doesn't really work with that either so we can do we can create this a second way and we also have some different controls with this as well which are kind of nice so if i come in and just create a height field at the same size as our as our clouds let's go ahead and reset our viewport because we are getting some residual clouds left over there so if i take this height field and we just convert this just to give us the same size height field as what we had with our height field file or the same size grid i should say we can come in here and we can go with a point bop and some of these cloud nodes are actually somewhat available in VOPs. So if I come to the patterns, you can see we have a few different things here. So we have Fibratus, Flocus, and Fractus. So let's drop down each one of these, Fibratus, Flocus, and what was the third one? Fractus. So if we select our point position and just wire that into each one of these, and then let's go ahead and drop down a ramp. So a ramp parameter. We're going to wire in our noise into the input and then the ramp into our color. And if I go ahead and just crank up the element size to like 100, you can see that we have some of this noise starting to show up on our terrain. So this Fibratus one is kind of like a fibrous type material sort of like a, or like a noise I mean something similar to uh, like I guess the long stringy type clouds that you'd see in the sky this flocus you take this this is more of kind of typical like noise types that you'd see in the, in the sky I feel like so you'd use this one quite a bit and then also this fractus is again Kind of more similar to those those noises so we can combine a couple of these if we want to so if we just set like an add here let's offset this by a random amount and same with our fractus and we can play around with the wispy strength and stuff as well to get some really really noisy things or less noisy just play around with the different settings we have billowy details in here as well so this is kind of adds some more detail to our cloud we can warp it and fold and do whatever the heck we want with it with all of these um, settings you can rotate it as well so we'll add a little bit of rotation in here but let's go ahead and take this add let's wire in our practice and our focus and then wire that into our ramp and you can see that we have something going on here so let's just I pass that so before and then after with the second noise added in gives us kind of a, a nice interesting look let's go ahead and take this element size and maybe we'll just crank this up to like 300 and maybe not that much maybe like 200 just to break up some of that and then maybe we can add some wispy details into to this as well maybe that's too much and we could also just play around with um, the we play around add another ramp in here and just play around with with the blending of these two but let's go ahead and just leave this as is for now and in this let's also drop down a transform after this point bop and let's go ahead and translate this up 200 units just so it's in the same spot as our sky field over here and now with this, we can assign, we can create another material. So I've already got it set up here, but all I'm doing is taking in the display color because with um, the Solaris works uh, space, you're working in USD and a CD is normally what you mess with with Houdini with color, but when USD it's translated into display color. So I've dropped down a material X geometry property value. So just type in geometry pop property value drop that down, display color, and make sure that's set to color. Pipe that into a ramp here. And this is just a, a ramp parameter. And that's just going into the opacity. And that gives us the ability to just play around with the, the kind of the clouds and the, this 
uh, shadows of those clouds and how they look. So let's apply that material to our clouds here. And let's see, I have that set up in there. Yep. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump back into our camera and we can start to render. And you can see that we have our cloud showing up here. So if I jump back into our material, we can come back to this ramp parameter and I've already kind of messed with this a little bit. So let's just reset, drop down another ramp parameter here with the default values and we'll wire that into our opacity. So by default, this is what we get. So I can mess around with this, get some more dense, obviously you don't wanna to go too much, uh, whoops. But we can kind of mess around with this and get some, the density that we're looking for. If you wanna add just a little bit of cover to it all, maybe we get a little bit like that and then we can play around with the the sharpness and the, the contrast of our shadows as well that just gives you a little bit more control over this and obviously like i said you can you can drag this down and play with the opacity of your clouds get the exact look that you're going for but that's a general overview of how you can go about creating some nice gobos with the new cloud tools inside houdini i personally prefer this type of a workflow with the point bops just because the sky field noises i i like the sky field noise but um as far as i can tell or at least as far as i could come up with there wasn't a great way of controlling the overall look in the final um the final render there so you don't have as much control with that you also get a little bit more control just with these overall in general just using these types of noises and you can kind of combine them in all different ways that you want and a little bit better control over it versus the sky field nose. I also do want to point out that the 3D sky field, the sky box, is also available in, in Vops. This has all the different things inside of uh, inside of Vops here as well. And let's let's just mess around with this. Let's just plug this plug this in and see what it gives us. Uh, this is gonna be a float value, so we can use that for ramp input as well, probably. I don't know if this works at all. I have not messed with it. So it looks like this probably wouldn't work out too well. I'd have to mess around with that on a different day, but that node is itself available inside the SOPs. So if you just drop down like a skybox, you can use this sky field noise in combination with the skybox as well. So this is what it kind of gives you by default. And then if you want to use like for the coverage, if you want to use our sky layer that we created, it's going to only put clouds where our sky layer is. And you can set all these different settings. So the precipitation anvil, that's all available in here as well. See precipitation and anvil in there. So if you have those checks, you could set these to use sky layer as well. And then you could get all that stuff inside of this. So if you want to create 3D sky boxes, this is how you go about it. And the sky box, I personally don't think that running through the sky field, 2D sky field um, nodes is really all that necessary. The 3D sky field, uh, the sky box here has all this different stuff in it and it works pretty well. It's, it's implemented uh, very, very well. So. I would just use this on its own without the sky field noise, uh, the 2D sky field noises to, to drive that. But that's uh, just my personal preference. So play around with it and see what you like the best. But that is, like I said, an overview of how we can create some gobo type stuff inside Houdini with the new uh, sky f or skybox nodes and sky field nodes in houdini 20 so like i said this project file will be available on patreon so if you want to grab it you can do so on there but anyways i have a bunch of other stuff on my channel if you want to learn more about houdini so check that out if you're interested cover a lot of different topics inside houdini so take a look and see what interests you but anyways like i said this project file is available on patreon if you want to grab it on there it's also free to follow on patreon so if you don't want to miss out on anything that i could be uploading in the future on there then make sure to follow if you have an account like i said 
Have a good day, and thank you all for watching.